So now let's begin. Um, Chen Kai from LinkedIn. So actually, on Tuesday, I we I talked about how we did DevOps in our team because that's something that we we need to ensure that each developer how many times can get can go online. So.、Uh, So for each year we can do about twenty thousand. So I think that's a good capacity. So I think one of the keywords is that each person can、uh, each person per day. So when we、uh, just a small team, it was easily to, it was easy to do. But when we scaled up, then the distribution volume that actually we need to maintain that volume, it was quite pressure. It was quite a pressure for us. So Lintrin, so we are just a small, a、uh, quite a small team, and now we can have a direct influence on our team members. And now, in terms of our DevOps, it it wasn't that difficult. So if it's just an a、uh, big, so for a big project, so actually we had these. Project was actually with our this project. Actually, the goal was how we launched the DevOps. So we also have Chi Hui from our clients to actually one of our clients to share some of the information. So I will briefly go through the background of the project and then. Also, the overall plan and construction architecture idea of our project. In the last day, I'll talk about the project and the technical details. So, for companies like PetroChina, how actually how did they use our products and how did they use the DevOps? So you know that when we think about PetroChina, it's a giant company, so it has a lot of modules and about the entire chain of this oil industry. So when we talk about the Like a lot of, for instance, the oil fields. We have dozens of oil fields, and、uh, like for each single of oil fields, they, for instance, they used to have a lot of systems. Then that meant that we had like several hundreds of different systems. So it was difficult to manage all the system, like the all the data, and、uh, so we couldn't actually be able to have the great support for the transactions. So this time that we use this platform to address all the challenges we faced. So actually, this is just a, a picture that we. So that this is just a brief. Like architecture of our project, so at that time we have these the data. So because so today we're mainly going to talk about DevOps. So we have these pass platform, and we have three scenarios, including container platform DevOps and also microservice governance. So the three important core scenarios for the cloud native. So because we have these unified platform, so we have some support for the business of Petro China. So now let's welcome Chi Hui to talk about the overall plan and the ideas about the project. So,、uh, I'm Chi Hui. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I mainly focus on the DevOps at PetroChina. So I'm going to briefly go through something about business. So it's more like some like real scenarios, real time scenarios. So these, uh, so as mentioned by Mr. Chen, so it's a cloud platform based on container, divided into DevOps, microservices, and container platform. And the container platform is kind of like the support for our architecture. And we have some tenant system in the safety management at the back end. 
In the next uh, to go into some details, we have eight systems for our DevOps. So for like we have some tools to support in terms of, for instance, the project management. Because for each project, we actually have more projects than products. So we, when we have a project, we have a lot of regulations and rules to, to actually to govern all the projects and also to go govern the business. And uh, this kind of like a business, a kind of like an experience for our project and. Uh, we will actually push those experience as to put it in on the conference and uh, for the and also for the delivery part. So it's kind of like a code, and we have a deployment to run all the activities. So it's called kind of like an automated process, and uh, we also use container technology to support our automated process, and also for the monitoring, the, the DevOps monitoring. So it's not only about the project. We have DevOps, so it's kind of like a the monitoring for the visual and also for this the improvement and, the and also the statistics so because we have some real-time data so for instance the requirements that um, so how like um, how many success we had and the failures we had so we had all those data and uh, have these kind of a visualized display in the, to help with our improvement and in terms of the materialization and to provide some real data for our future improvement and to have this plan for our future deployment for have a sustainable and sustained improvement in the future and for the training side we have two parts the first one is we have a training and learning system and the second part is that we have actually an internal environment for this training so because since last year we started this module and uh, we have been exploring and uh, during the process that in the learning and training part that training takes less amount because training like, uh, is not as good as actually doing it so we still think that practicing is better than just lecturing them so because we have a certain like preset code and a preset environment and uh, so for instance within two days of training uh, maybe it's divided into like one and a half day lecture and uh, then half day or maybe one day for practicing and uh, we will have and trainers guide them to actually tell them how to put those theories into practice and in some we have a devops uh, panorama so you can see that so as because some parts I have already covered so because at the bottom we have a, a Kubernetes infrastructure and also we had some scenarios because at the middle level that we can go into some details because we have we actually have these for instance so we have a transaction tracking tool so it's not just a, about a single tool for instance we now use Gia but but like we see you have like other red mail and uh, also these actually depends on the the business itself to so what requirements that we have and then we will decide the tool that we use based on that requirements and also the code is the same that so we can choose which one that we're going to use and also this is kind of like a more detailed picture for the last slide and on the right side is about the learning training system now the next one is some of the tools that we've been using about like more than we have several dozens of them so so like we have like a GF conference and um, an X for the code version management and also the architecture and the sooner cube for the static code and, scan and the scanning and uh, also for red west cube and uh, we have these actually testing and uh, we have 
another one at the testing that is not listed here. So it's also for testing. So for that's all for the tools. And、uh, this one is actually the procedure. So this is like an overall procedure. So we actually have a lot of details here. So for instance, a lot of like we have requirements and demands. Then we have a detailed procedure、uh, for these and.、Uh, This is kind of like procedure that we have some summaries, and we actually now we have、uh, some changes in terms of the procedure. For instance, for normal procedure, we have five different、uh, five different parts, and、uh, when we put it into actual practice, so for instance, if kind of like a, it, it like if it's just in a hurry that you have to get it online within two days, so like five steps would be too much for them. It takes too much time, and then we will have to have that these kind of a procedure. So. So、uh, for the one thing that you can follow the procedure, and the only time it like take takes less time, so it's more efficient. And now this is the the also the guideline, the regulation guideline design. So we have these four plus one model.、Um, the this kind of model was used in the past time, and then now we have updated these into. So since we adopted the microservices, we only have a few people working. So if we just have one person working in the branch, so I think two branches will be enough for them. And now this is the roles of our team members. This is only part of it, and because we have、uh, for the DevOps, so like a lot of. Yeah, it's just、uh, about the development and also users, and also product manager, and also we have design requirements. So the the product manager will like send these requirements to our developers, and we have people responsible for testing as well. And after testing, we have releasing of the. Releasing of the project, so I will not go into details. So after all these, so we will have all the scenarios. So like, what roles are you playing, and what tools shall we use, and what regulations and what procedures shall we follow? That to realize these scenarios. So this is kind of the scenario that we have at the moment, and、uh, all the full parts here. So it's kind of like a more detailed scenarios here. So because we have these demand management, we, the because like the four scenarios, and it's kind of like it's not we 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 didn't make make it up, because they are actually extracted from our. Pain points that we encountered, like when we ran the project. So, for instance, the developers maybe they felt the instruction they got wasn't clear enough, and then also like the DevOps people thought that the, maybe they didn't have enough. Like maybe the data was like too scattered around, and it was difficult for them to run the project. So, because of the pain points that we actually extracted all those demands and requires、uh, requirements from the project. So also, so the demand management scenario we have four different scenarios. So all the way from demand to the maintenance. So it's kind of like a complete procedure. So when we run the the, pre, the, the, the so actually all those scenarios are in th that we're actually running them and、uh, so we have a lot of like detailed regulations. So if you have used these, so you know that when it's quite open for the task managing and、uh, it, we didn't have like、uh, certain rules and how to manage it. You actually have a、uh, like flexibility in terms of the running of the project and in terms of the design. And we have the project manager or the director. So when they finish this part, then we have these develop test scenarios and then they. 
were assigned to the developed side. And uh, so for the dev side, then the developers and the testers, they will get their assignments simultaneously. And then we will connect the development and uh, demands. And then we can actually see that the, the project that we have, like what codes that we're targeting at and what projects or the like, requirements that we have at the moment, and also our like the people responsible for the testing that will start the testing and uh, after that they will submit so f like it so we maybe in the past they need to submit all the requests but now they can just uh, realize the function just by clicking one button so that all the uh, developers and the testers they can connect to each other and uh, they can share the the data and also after when we finish the testing they can submit the tasks and also through the system that we have this maybe on the on offline so we they can connect they can contact the test the people responsible for testing and then those people will follow the instructions and the rules and inside the platform they will extract the scenarios and the environment and because we have different like uh, dev teams and we have a certain testing environment so it's more complicated than the people and the developers so now we have a simple like more simple way for running this so that means that it's like more like easier for them to run all the testing so when they have the testing environment and uh, in terms of the like the functions or like uh, other testings after finished uh, completed and then they can just uh, run the report and after what afterwards they can just uh, send the reports to the people uh, working in the devops and uh, so for the people working in DevOps, they can actually like the operation side uh, for uh, so when they run like the maintenance and the operations, so they will be clear about the requirements that they have and uh, the 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 requirements are now become like transparent, and then they will have like a more visualized and uh, so we have these kind of like high visibility. And during this process, so that now their work is much easier than before. So after like launching, and we have this scenario, so and then the, the work is done. So this is kind of like the results here. Oh, here we actually have the um, increase and upgrade over here. We we'll just look through it. This is also when we're doing the um, consultation or when we're doing research. We're researching what can this container, what are the advantages that you can bring. So what we brought here today are the real case scenario. Um, what kind of advantages does it brought to us? Including we can deliver 20 different new codes per day. This is, um, we cannot imagine this in the past. So this is just a showcase of our results. Um, there are some old clay, old case scenarios, uh, some of them are real. Um, there are also other statistics that we did not show. For instance, how many pair lines do we have? How many production lines do we have? It does not show over here. Uh, this does not look so big today. And here are, is also our example and results for our procedures. So this has demonstrated all the output files we have brought and all the procedures, all the file we have made during the procedures. So these will be, oh, and next I would like to invite the um, next speaker. Thank you. So if you want to talk about example, it's better leave that to our customers. That topic, actually, he can talk about um, half an hour or even more, but in the time limits, um, we cannot talk so much about that. So you can feel like for a traditional enterprise that like um, China Petrol, you can use a lot of DevOps. So how can we use a platform and to realize all the application that it needs and network? So I'd like to introduce our platform. 
we're called the Alada. We have two product line. One is called the Alada Container Platform. The ACE is a highly standardized platform. It covers three different scenarios, including container, DevOps, and microservice. So it is the three most important service in cloud native structure. And then the ACE is the Alada Cloud Enterprise. AC is basically for these um, huge entities, customers. As for the um, China Petrol, we've mentioned the Rei Dao is, is actually very suitable for this platform. AC includes all the characteristics of ACP. That is for establishing a um, unilateral platform for huge enterprises because some of these big customers, they have very complicated infrastructures, environment. So when people, when people starting to use public cloud, they will not focus on one um, cloud provider. They will use multiple cloud providers. So we have offered this um, multi-cluster management and multi-cloud management function. So we can supply this multiple K bar S cluster and we can manage very complicated cluster. This is um, what we can do beyond ACE. Managing of the cluster can not only through ACE. So the lower side is ACP. We can let our customer um, migrant their K8, their um, Kubernetes into this. Because some of our customers we have discovered that they use ACE but the Kubernetes is an open shift. So for ACE, open shift is basically the same of our ACP. Another very important thing is the um, internal rental customers. Because within the enterprise, there are a few categories of users. We have this direct collaboration customers. They are the platform unit. For instance, Gartner has mentioned the hybrid IT in his analysis report. For a business unit, this is the provider of our cloud platforms. From business unit perspective, it's quite complicated. For the um, ACEU's adoption scenarios, we have thousands of different scenarios. And between different that scenarios, we need to have different types of renting customers and they need to work collaboratively. Uh, sometimes they need to have this isolation functions for the resource. And these are our customers asking for it. And this is what ACE needs to solve. So today we need to talk about, mainly we're going to talk about DevOps. This is the main module in ACE. So when, we're, when we are um, talking about these DevOps requirements with our customers, they're already using some tools inside and there are some procedures that we need to complete or even to finalize some um, product that we, they already exist. We cannot just simply replace them because it's not suitable. So this is actually the thinking map that we're using right now. So this is a integration that we can call through integration and cluster. We can link everything together into a tool link and to become as a whole. So we can manage it's through um, it's through life range. And through automation, we can serve the platform and to offer our customers the best service. This integ is integration of DevOps. We can deploy this on our um, container platform. This is not necessary. Sometimes it's not necessary because some container is already exist. We have this public SaaS service. We can just put it into the public cloud platform. But one thing we need to make sure is that we need to have the um, platform and tool deep of integration. And also we need to the platform and tool premises, we need to link that together. The SSO. Each enterprise tool will have its model for our rental customers. And also they need to have linkage between each other. 
for instance, we need to thousands of production engineers in it and to share these tools together and they need to follow some certain regulations. And finally, we need to have a deep integration. It covers 80% of our usage scenarios. It can be complete just within the platform. You don't have to go into the tools. And it is the um, CI and CD is through Jenkins. We've mentioned that big enterprises using ACE, their platforms, we can divide that into two different users. For instance, for China Petrol, they are the um, platform unit. They are the um, establisher of these platforms and the supporting role for this platform as for our business unit. For customers, they are the um, rental users on these platforms. The infra is for them is prepared by the manager of the platform, and then they will create these um, rental managers on the platform. They will allocate the resources to each users, um, allocate them what um, which what amount of resource they can use. And this user management, after they have acquired this resource, they will create their own environment that is the namespace within the Kubernetes. But some users, they are so huge. Well, they can be tens and thousands of them. So it can be, they can be quite big. And under each users, we can create different user groups. And this environmental resource, they can also allocate to these small groups under the users as well. For DevOps, they can have integration and cluster of resource. They can use some tools. These tools, you can see that as a service that can be published. And the users, they can subscribe them. As for China Petrol, this is the modes that we use. And they can establish this resource for different tools and allocate them to different users. From the user's manager, there are three ways they can acquire resource. Maybe they can directly get it from the resource manager. Maybe they can subscribe from the um, platform manager. Also, they can deploy the tool by themselves. So they can establish their own resource in their own user group. They, they can also allocate their resource to the small groups that's underneath them. And these are the details. On the left-hand side, you can see that they are actually allocating some cluster resource to our users. There's a cluster called the Federation one. So if we can choose one or two clusters, you can form them into a new cluster. It's called the Fe it's called Federation. But it's not actually the federation we've mentioned in the Kubernetes system because they are some new designs that's too complicated for us. So it's not this federation is not the federation within the Kubernetes system. So when our user is deploying this um, federation here, it will automatically deploy it into two different clusters. Later on, they can manage this independently, but overall, they can manage this together. This is especially useful within the financial industry. On the right hand side is after choosing the cluster, you can allocate the resource within the cluster for our users. It's basically very similar to the name, uh, the name cell, uh, the namespace function. This user manager, they can establish groups under the users if this user group is quite big. But more importantly, they need to establish their own environment. And that environment is the namespace under Kubernetes. We can also configure the resource that they need that they want to use. We know that under this big Kubernetes system um, we can we have layers and layers of different resources that we can allocate, but it cannot surpass the resources overall allocated by the upper layer. 
So after this users, if you have some small groups underneath it, we can command them through this. Also, we have this deployer and this um, cluster tools. The platform manager can also establish their own resource. For instance, like conference space, like the group in GitHub. After establishing these resource, they can allocate these to the users. And these users, they can check out what type of resource has been published by the manager and they can subscribe it and they can use. Also, they can create their own resource as well and to allocate them into their small group. So for the final five minutes, I would like to introduce how do we do um, CICD through Jenkins and Kubernetes. So we have chosen some very deep CICD examples. There are two main goals when we're designing this platform. The first goal is that maybe our customer, they have the small group of people within their enterprise that know about Jenkins. But most of the developers for CICD, they do not know a lot about Jenkins files. It's too complicated. If there's no one if no one knows about Jenkins, we can also offer our help for design. And the other target of our when designing is that we need, we hopefully we can cover 80% of our design scenarios on the platform. So there is only a small chance they need to go into tools and check out their own tools. So basically, they can finish this by themselves. For production lines, they can establish their own production line, and they can have this mutual, they can send out this mutual command, they can check out their logs, they can check out the um, results, and they okay, they can also do debug. So we can have we can have this a thorough linkage between all the stage, all the life stage of our products. So this Kubernetes we, we have used the Jenkins Plus Kubernetes and the Allodoc and Jenkins plugin or the DSL to manage it. And we support this create, um, this creation of production line. We know that most of our users, they will not touch Jenkins file every time when they want to create this production line. But the point is, if they use Jenkins, they can basically realize everything they can realize on the platform. Using Jenkins files, you can complete this production line and code. So they can be easily on board to our platform. But coding Jenkins files is very, is very troublesome. So we have this DSL plugin. We can have an exchange of information between that and the allowed up platform. So the next step is we need to modulize our production line. And this is reference this is a reference of the home chart under under Kubernetes. It's basically like the YAML file under that. So the point is, we are not trying to introduce too many new concepts because if our customer is familiar with the old stuff, it can be easier for them. So after we have finished designing our templates, our users can just use it directly. And our next step is trying to modulize these templates. So it's easier. To, it can be easier when operating under the user's interface. Also, we have mentioned that we need to break through the barriers between users, authentications, because this includes the um, user system and the IDP system. And also we have the OIDC API. So under Jenkins, we have this plugin for auto sign up. And also we can have this auto synchronize authentication plugin. We know that under Jenkins, it's a uh, metrics and, and on our platform is based on the user's role. So 
depend on that role we can offer as authentication and privilege. And it's all under the Kubernetes system. We use that as a framework, including like the production line, the pipeline. If, if it's for API, we just offer that through the Kubernetes server. And other tools will have customer controller. And finally, is that hopefully we can link all the stage different stages within our product's lifetime, which will be easier for them to deploy. For instance, this production line, they've run this test. Um, we have finished that. But after the submit of our coding is for this time's development mission. And this mission is based on the requirements of the develop uh, of this customer's development. So people are signal me that the time is up. If you have any questions, I'll stay in this room and we can have some small chat. Thank you.